All right. I decided to do this video to tell a little bit about my story. A lot of people know me and I have met a lot of people all over, but uh, very few people really know my background, where I came from. And I'm just going to give a little bit of an idea of uh, who I am. You know, I was born in a very small town north of Brazil. I born in a very, very small city in the, close to the beach. And uh, for a very humble family. My daddy was auto mechanic and uh, I remember he was a very talented auto mechanic and my mom was a stay home mom taking care of five kids. Well, my daddy was a little bit adventurous because I remember until the age of 10, I was living in like five or six different cities. He was independent and he decided to move from one city to another. And uh, finally, when I was uh, nine years old, actually, he you just establish this place, very, very nice uh, 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 shop that he put together. And he was working over there very well. And uh, then he decided to build a house. You know, it was like the dream house for the family. Everybody was very excited. And the house was really big. And he was working the design. He designed himself. was was very good. My daddy actually was really good in that aspect. And... Uh, we always going there to see how the house was going, the progress. My mom also was very excited because no woman want to be moving around with five kids, renting houses here and there. And uh, right before the house be finished, my daddy was killed. You know, it was a, it was a shock for the whole family. One day he was working, then he decided to go out to some friends and uh, we no really know the true story. But uh, next day he came home in a, in a casket you know i was 10 years old at that time and uh for me or my brothers and sisters was uh was a very very difficult time to cope with especially because when my daddy was uh, was not around my mom could not could not be there to take care of the kids you know she had to go work and uh, we had to move to my grandpa's house was the only option she could find, you know, and uh, she started going to work and going back to school and she never been working before. And uh, man, she was like an amazing woman because she was taking care of the kids and going to work and going back to school and she graduated, she become an assisted nurse and she was working daytime, going to school at night. It was a very, very hard time for her and especially for us. You know, and uh, one day I was watching the Olympics and I saw the track and field. I said, man, I'm going to do that. I love it. I, I was just, I felt in love with the track and field and I decided to be a runner. However, at the age of 11, I had this incident that until today I could not find the answers. I stopped bleeding from my nose and uh was something very very unusual something very strange because i was bleeding up to the state when i get in coma you know and i remember four times in my life i've been in coma being in the hospital when the doctor said there was no hope anymore and uh you know i have to have blood transfusion and i wake up like three days later and so that means on top of lose my daddy, on top of have five kids to take care, on top of be working and going back to school, my mom had a very hard time taking care of me because I was a very sick kid. And I remember all the time he had the same story of the doctors. This boy cannot stay out in the sun. He cannot run. He cannot play. He cannot. All I had to do is stay home and read. And man, come on, how can you tell an 11, 12 years old boy not to do anything like that? But at the age of 13, I decided, no hiding from my mom, to start running. And uh, suddenly, somebody invited me to start doing karate. This guy decided to put together an academy. He was like 15 years old. He said, man, let's get together and start training karate. And we can get instructors. So we start doing that. And I believe that the physical activity was what got me back, you know, got my health back. Because at that time, I was between my friends, everybody my age, in my school, I was the smallest. I'm sorry. I was the skinniest, 
and uh, the smallest kid over there. And man, I decided to be buff. I decided to get my legs, my chicken legs, a little bit muscle. And I was working hard and going to stadiums and going up and down the soccer stadiums and doing a lot of legs workout and training karate. And I become uh, really good, not because I'm talented, but because I was training harder than anybody else. And that helped me. My determination at that time it helped me. And then I started doing track and field and I started competing in my first high school competition. I got second day state. One year later, I was the first place, and I was like in the top of the world. You know, the age of 17, I still have pictures of that time. It was like a dream time for me, especially a guy from a small town being in the newspaper. It was like, you know, something amazing for me. But life in Brazil is not easy. You know, when you're working, when you have to find a job, and when you have to have a career. So I decide to get out of my small city. I didn't have any resource to go to the big cities. So I decided to go to the Navy. So I, I resisted to the Navy and the competition was hard because they had like 1,500 people and they just take 250. So the Navy was very selective in Brazil and uh, luckily I was selected to, to stay on. And I started serving the Navy and of course, I started doing track and field through the Navy, and that was good because I had the opportunity to move to Rio de Janeiro. That was like, I would say, my dream city in Brazil. So when I went to Rio, I was like feeling really good about being part of the you know, Navy track and field team, training hard and uh, working really hard. After four years, I left the Navy and uh, I had to be, you know, in the marketplace and it was really difficult to find a good job finally i got a job in an airline company and i decided man i can travel outside the country at that time in brazil there was a he heavy there was a very heavy corruption in the government it was terrible and uh i tried to do a business with some friends and man it was so hard then we end up you know bankrupting even before the business started even because my partner was not helping he was not a lot of shady business right in the beginning and in the midst of that confusion i came to visit miami man, for me at that time miami was like a paradise compared to brazil at that time and i went back to brazil and said man i need to go to america I want to go to America and I decided I was going to come over here so I came in, I got a vacation and I came to California. I had a guy that I knew and uh, the guy, you know, find a hotel for me, he set up everything so I came, I stayed in a the hotel, then stayed stayed some friend's house, I started meeting some people and decided to go to Brazil just to sell everything and decided to come over here to live with my family at that time. It was me, my wife and a 10 years old boy and everything was running okay well i was accountant and suddenly i was working a factory you know in a plastic factory with the minimum wage but man i had a determination first i had to learn the language i was still trying but at that time it was worse because i could not understand i could not communicate at all and second, because I had to do something better for myself. So I started working in the factory during the day and at night I was doing valet parking. And unexpectedly, my wife got pregnant when we least expect, we least plan to have a baby. She got pregnant, I thought my first daughter, Kathleen. And uh, she could not work, so I had to be working double and uh, work as hard as I could to support my family. In the middle of that, you know, I also decided to go back and do some exercise. I was feeling extremely out of shape. Well, I was terrible at that time. And then I started doing exercise again. And again, I fell in love with physical exercise. I started running. One day I went to walk. And I did like a quarter mile walk. And I came back home. I was, I was dying. I said, man, I need to do something physically. And I decided to go back to work work out well after a few days i was doing really good and running and i decided man i'm gonna do a marathon i'm gonna I, I have to train for something i have to have a specific goal if i have a specific goal i'll go for it 
So I decided to do a marathon and I decided to start training for a marathon. Man, it was challenging. But I was doing well, you know, at least for that. And six months later, I ran my first marathon. It was really difficult. I was almost dying. I said, man, I'm never going to do something like that again in my life. When I finished the, crossed the finish line, I look back and said, man, that was actually fun. I'm going to do it again. So I decided to do another marathon. And at this time, I got third place overall. It was a San Pedro Marathon. And uh, there was just 430 people, something like that, 430, 450 people. And I was feeling so good on that race. That race was really difficult. I broke my first time for, for about, in about 32 minutes. And I got third place and I decided, man, I'm going to get first place in the marathon. And that was my goal. At that time as well, I decided to get my license as a personal trainer because I had a lot of experience training people. I did karate, I teach karate, I was teaching uh, track and field, I was teaching kickboxing. And I got the license and started working in LA Fitness. And uh, after a little while, I thought, man, you know, the club really make a good profit of my work. One thing that made me a very good trainer was the desire to learn. For example, at the age of 13, I started training karate. What I did, I bought all the books I could find about karate, and I was reading and training by myself. At the age of 16, I was able to be teaching karate. I was not the best fighter. I was not the best you know, in the academy at all. But I had the best technique, I had the best way to train it, and I think I had the better knowledge than most people over there. Because I was studying every detail, I was studying everything how to do it. And the same when I started doing uh, personal training. Besides the experience I already had, I was reading every book that I could find. I read so many books and I was just trying to apply and understand how to do the best for my clients. And uh, I would say that I've become a very good personal trainer because of my experience in sport, my experience with karate and all the books that I was reading, all the certification that I got. But one thing that was uh, terrible was when somebody else who just got a weekend certificate come to the club and they start working, make the same wage I was doing. I said, man, that's not fair. Sometimes I have to be training the guys and telling the guys don't do this exercise for this client it's not appropriate this client need that exercise this client need the core this client need posture and uh i was the time i was training the trainers and getting nothing from it and i decided man you know what i'm gonna open my own place and i decided to do that i opened my fitness center in the city of orange and i started doing really well there was a lot of people who knew me already i didn't know how to market but there was a lot of people that I knew and I was just talk, you know, one friend or another and some people who was in LA Fitness recommend other clients and uh, I started doing well until 2008. Some of you have, might not know how serious was the recession at that time, but 2008 was terrible. And I remember in one month, in, in about 30 days, I lost 90% of my clients. Somebody came out, you know, I just lost my business. I cannot do this anymore. And somebody else came, man, I just got a laid off. My company closed down. Oh, my business is terrible. Man, I just accumulated a lot of debt. And uh, I had the contract of all those people. And I said, man, what am I going to do? I'm going to sue those people for the money they don't have. You know? When you become a trainer, you become friends with your clients. And uh, how can I sue those people and uh, become, you know, create a lot of enemies? So I just had to talk to the owner of the location and say, look, we need to do an agreement because I have the rent, I have the contract over here, but there is no way I can afford to keep this place. So I have to, you know, at that time I was also, or actually prior to that, I had my divorce. So it was not the best time of my life. And uh, after the divorce, I ended up losing my business. So I lost the business and I decided to start working just with elderly people. There was a lot of people who still wouldn't work with me, but they could not afford. But a few few clients, they still wanted, wanted me to keep working with them. So I was doing like home training and also I had a license to geriatric exercise. So I still worked with a lot of elderly people 
teach them how to walk, how to develop the muscle, you know, some core, some basic exercise for most people that have some difficulty with that. And uh, I was doing well, and uh, I, I started working with this company who do home care. So I was actually doing uh, uh, okay, home care. Yeah, exactly, home care with the people. And mainly with people who had some physical, you know, difficult and need help. So I was working with those people, and uh, one day I was starting this horrible pain in my back. I said, man, why is this pain so intense, you know? And uh, I went to the gym, I did some exercise, and man, the pain kept increasing. Until one day, I remember, there was one Monday. I was getting out of bed. When I stand up, I felt this pain on my back and in my right leg. The pain was so intense, I felt that I was going to pass out. And uh, I, mean, I laid down in bed, just holding on my knees, and I was screaming in pain. The pain was terrible, and I, I called the company and said, look, I cannot go back to work. I cannot work today. I'm so sorry. Send somebody else. And that was a Monday morning. And that day, I didn't get out of bed. I could not get out of bed at all. I was in pain, intense pain, the pain that I never thought I was going to feel. And the pain was increasing with the day. And uh, during the night was the same. I did not sleep at all. I had two roommates and the guy said, man, how, what time did you sleep? You're like screaming all night. I said, I didn't. I didn't sleep. I was really, really intense pain. And I called some friends, people are trying to bring some medication, some pain medication for this. And no, no, I, I cannot be taking those medication that is strong and I don't know what's wrong. So I called the company and uh, my company said, look, you need to go through the insurance. But the insurance was giving a very, very hard time. And it was Tuesday and that was Wednesday, Thursday. And let me tell you this, I never thought that would be possible, but I was unable to sleep at all during all those days, until Friday. On Thursday, I remember I was so tired, and I started taking a nap and have this shock, I have this pain inside my leg, I have the intense pain on my back, and I scream, I wake up screaming, any movement, I sneeze, everything was terrible pain, and I... I couldn't do anything but be laying down there and uh, actually I was with my knees on the floor and my body over the bed. That's the only position I could stay. With my knees on the floor and laid down on the bed and just, man, in pain. So Friday I decided, man, I cannot take anymore. So I decided to go to the hospital. My roommates are not home. They were out in the night, so I crawled myself. I was crawling on the floor into my car, until I got in my car. I got over there, I was laying on the floor in the middle of the street, you know, just thinking, man, how am I going to get in the car? So I just reached a little bit, got the key inside the knob, and opened the car, and grabbed myself inside the car. I stayed over there for like 10 minutes, like crushing pain, just, you know, trying to cope with that pain until I'd be able to drive. And uh, luckily, my right leg was the one having so much problem. I was able to drive to the hospital. When I got over there, I remember I opened the car door and I was sitting over there in pain. This guy walking in and said, man, are you okay? He said, no, I need your help. And he came, oh, oh, what's going on? I said, can you get my wheelchair? I said, sure, yes, I can get your wheelchair. So he got my wheelchair and I just holding myself and he pulled me inside. When the person in the reception saw me, she took me in right away. I don't know what she saw. In the emergency room, there were so many people over there. When she saw me, she said, oh, come in, come in. She just opened the door and put me inside. <laughs> and this doctor came to see me right away. I mean, luckily, you know, she came to see me and she gave me like, a shot of prednisone with the morphine. And uh, they say, you know, can I drive after this? You have to have somebody to drive for me. I said, okay, I was over there for about 45 minutes later. I felt the relief. Finally, the pain was gone. I felt tense. I felt a little bit of pain, but not that strong pain. So I remember driving back home. I was feeling so joyful. I was so joyful. I got home. I went straight to bed, and I slept until next day 12. 
Saturday about middle of the day wake up so oh my god how good it is to be able to sleep but that was not it you know after a few a little bit I was in pain again but at least I could take some medication I remember I was taking Norco was a very dangerous medication can get you addicted it was very strong medication and I was taking that and uh, I was able to at least sleep, but I was not able to walk for about three months. Took me about three and a half months to be able to get out of the wheelchair and start using the walker like a 95 years old guy and move around. And when people saw me, my friends saw me and said, man, you're so skinny, what's going on? <laughs> well, a lot of things going on, you know, and uh, I started doing the treatment. I remember one day the doctor said, look, we need to get you to the surgery. I said, doctor, you know, I really don't want to do a surgery. He said, look, if you don't do a surgery, you're never going to be able to walk again on your life. Wow, that's a very scary, I would say promise, a very scary statement. And uh, I said, well, you know, I, I don't want to do a surgery. He said, well, there's no more treatment for you. I said, okay, discharge me. What? Are you crazy? He said, yeah, just discharge me. I don't want to do this anymore. I don't want to be taking those medications. I don't want to go to surgery. I want to find out what to do. So I went back home and I was just doing research what to do in that situation. And uh, what they do in Brazil, because I remember there was no surgery. The doctors over there don't take you to surgery right away. But one thing they do is uh, exercise, some basic exercise for you to move and loosen up the muscle and also put the heat. So we start doing the heating and exercise. And uh, a few months later, I was able to walk. And then a few months later, I was able to run. Now I'm back, I'm getting back in shape, and uh, I'm back running, I'm doing like, some days I do eight miles, 10 miles running, I'm running like seven minutes a mile. I never did the surgery, but luckily my back is, is good, it's good enough. And then, let me give a pause. Well, I decided to go back in business again. I was doing other type of business. And one thing that I found out is that my business fell in 2008. It was not because of the recession. It was not because of the economy. It was because of me. Not because I wanna fail, but because I didn't know how to get the clients. Because there is always people who want to do exercise. There is always, always people over there who want what you have all the time. However, I didn't know how to attract the clients. I didn't know how to market mes myself. I didn't know how to make me myself known and how to put my niche to work for the client. I didn't know anything about it. So all I needed to do was how to train people. I was good at training people, but you know, if you don't have people to train, it doesn't matter how good you are, you're never gonna make money. So I figured out that was my biggest uh, problem at that time and that's why my business so what i decided to do is put together a program for personal trainers i had some friends who say who was inviting me say man you know you have so much experience so much knowledge in this industry let's work together and open new place but I, I wasn't ready for that. You know, I, I was afraid, actually. I think I was afraid to fail again. Put too much energy, put too much money. I put a lot of money, energy, a lot of effort. And suddenly the business gone. But I realized the reason my business fell was not lack of clients. You know, there is always a lot of people out there who want what you have to offer. There is thousands of people over there looking for somebody like you. However, the biggest challenge is how to find those people. So what made my business fail, what made my business fail, I'm sorry, was no lack of client, it was a lack of knowledge, how to get those clients come looking for me, how to make myself you know, known in the industry to the point that people wanna to come to me and pay me $120 an hour, instead of pay $30 to the other guy over there who doesn't know what they're doing. 
you know, the knowledge is not enough if you don't know how to apply, if you don't know how to make the knowledge attract the clients, if you don't know, if you don't have clients to work on. So what I decide to get specialized is how to get the client, how to make the trainer be famous, I'd say, be known, how to develop your niche, and how to identify and attract the clients that you want. What the client you really want to attract and make the client come to you instead of you be searching clients all over. So I decided to put this program together to help personal trainers. And man, it's amazing because every time I talk to a trainer and I just show some basic things and they always, man, they always say, wow, that's amazing. How, oh, it seems like magic. It's incredible how simple things can make a big difference. And that's exactly the position I am right now. I'm over here just trying to help a lot of people, focus on help a lot of personal trainers, and help the trainers make a lot of money and have a solid, successful business. Well, I think that is enough for now. Maybe one day I need, I come back with more details about my life. Have a good one, everybody.